Gentlemen, uh, I was actually never going to be here before. I would like to thank Joe for inviting me back. Um, this piece is called The Lone Soldier. And uh, some say that um, he fought in the Great War, and others say that he just began to believe his own stories. <laughs> the Lone Soldier stands scribbled and bent, his military coat quite faded and spent. The cow in the barn, so full of sweet hay, chewing the cud and grunting with pleasure. Oh, Johnny, the bullets can straight through your head. Don't worry, I'll get you back to the trenches instead. His pain and his collar, a comrade's dying blood. He ducks and he dives from bar to bar, for a sniper in the hill could blow off his head. The pig in the style squeaks for his supper. Paddy O'Reilly, they cut off his leg. The card on the dresser reads Rosie O'Reilly. 1899-1969. Her place at the table kept neatly set amongst med captains, jam jars, and a stale loaf of bread. He sits at the fire, pokes yesterday's ashes, wishing the kittle would whistle the tune. He tells Rosie of daffodils that have popped up their head, a drift of snowdrops <coughs> up in the meadow, primroses that have blossomed in the shade of the ditch, and the cob that needs tackling to plough up the haggard. But Rosie is busy keeping her kitchen and humming a lullaby to baby and hip. He feels safe in this bunker, but then Jonesy could order you over the top and into that hell of barbed wire bullets and bombs. And then he retires to his lonely bed, takes off his jacket to place upon it. Now, Rosie, my darling, how's that? for a nice warm quilt. Thank you. We had a traditional way of doing it as well earlier here tonight when um, my friend down there stood up and gave a local history and a discourse of the place without once referring to the T-note or to reference. There's a saying for that in Irish, tear draw country love. And it was obvious in everything he said and everything he referred to that he had a love of the lore, a lore of the place integrated with it. And very often we don't appreciate people like him and what they've collected and what they've held until they're gone. So it's nice to see the warm applause and to see the appreciation of him here when, when he finished tonight. And again, this is about uh, appreciation of culture. It's from Scully's last Monday night. It's the first time I've done it in public. I tried to do it Wednesday night, lost the mood of it, and uh, I had to leave it. So hopefully I'll have it tonight without making a show of myself. The back room of Scully's is popping tonight from everywhere they have come. Ten fiddles, eight boxes, three banjos, two flutes, and a finger tipped drum. Tom Carroll that heard Tom Billy play, Paddy home from High Germany. Tim Brown back from a Swedish gig, and a fiddle and a Celtic composer from Far Brittany. Faces for Miller ranged all around, every inch taken, chairs to the wall. Banjos and flute fell up center ground. Mary on the box is giving it all. Patsy from Glasgow belts out a polka. Schlieve Lokra now in her fiddle and bow. And Timmy Connor would flourish and smile, keeps music moving, directing the flow. O Dunhu Port of Colony Cueve, and of Cambridge Cleister's and Lofty Hall, harvest the scene for rhythm and mood, timbre in words that will ever <coughs> recall. Remembering till this culture once broken, McAuliffe's in exile and banished to Spain, 
the great house of Alwork in darkness tonight, here our Ashling is bright, we have risen again. Did Great Head Mary, um, Shana Golden, and all those great poems, one time I was with Sean and Finuke, and um, he was going on uh, before me, and I just said, what should I do? Um, I didn't know what he was going to do, and he said, Sweet loving heart that Jesus wouldn't you do if you love poems or there's women around. You can't go, you can't go wrong and you'll never know what'd happen after. <laughs> so um, this is a celebration of country life of uh, fifty odd years ago. We started young in Schlieblucra. Soft after grass like silk to the soul, sloping fields warm and late evening sun. You buy the well waiting by the green sunny tree to bring home the water when day's work was done. The smile in your lips, the flow of your hair, awkward for greeting and fumble for words. Before freely talking, restored the old days, the last of the sun and the song of the birds. Lightly the kiss and quick the embrace, the magic we found to fragile to dare. In an ordinary world of everyday things, young love had reached out and held in its snare. Thirteen is a fine age, a threshold of life, when the world is young and can still weave a spell. Now I wave to your greeting with husband and children, as you smile the same smile that you smiled at the well. <laughs> Shredium has said that the monks took to the continent in the 6th century. It survived until the 10th century. It was picked up by the troubadours, it was taken up to Germany, it passed over to the Palatines and they brought it back home. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bit of a circuit. Uh, speaking of home and things that's affecting us, I was talking out there tonight about the economy, about the prospects of young people and other things like that. So I'll finish in a serious one. And uh, unfortunately a poem that while it's two years old, it won't go to currency for many a long year yet. Our president's younger brother his throat cut ear to ear, crawled to the streets to his parents' door, trailing blood and fear. He should have died but lived and liked the thousands more, forgotten, unremembered, and spoken of no more, while southern commerce clinked the tills and the southern and the chattering classes drank their wine and went to theater and to party and life for them stayed fine. Just like their people's people of forty years before, who scorned the wretched Magdalene's and Ireland's orphan poor, and left us waddle naked until the end of time, without excuse or reason for their appalling crime. While southern commerce clinked the tills, and the chattering classes drank their wine, and went to theatre and to party, and life for them stayed fine. From the famine to the forties, the holocaust of TB, took father, son, and mother, daughter, decimating family. And the clergy preached was God's own will, and the free state hoarded each half crown. In a decade, it was ended by the courage of Noel Brown. While southern commerce clanked the tills, and the chattering classes drank their wine, and went to theater and to party, and life for them stayed fine. Now each day brings some new scandal, for corruption seldom walks alone. This time it is our elders left with bed sores to the bone, 
while the PR men and pinstripes with ready written smile use the courts and constitution to buy greed another month or mile. While southern commerce clinks the tills and the chattering classes drink their wine and go to theatre and to party and life for them stays fine. I think about Jim Kimmy and a voice that spoke the truth. Now here in Jim's own city hangs the silence of the mute. And things march on unchanging and few things ever will. While the chattering classes have their wine and commerce clinks the tell.